Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm starting a minute early. I guess that's probably okay. Um, today, uh, my name is Gary Sapia. I'm with Analog Devices. I'm here to present a, a battery backup unit designed for the OR B3 solution, the spec that's available today. That's based on the Rev.5 that's currently available. I believe there's a 0.6 coming. Uh, it may be available now. I haven't uh, looked recently, but uh, that will be something we'll be, uh, we'll be entertaining. So with me today is one of my co-designers, Feng Gray Zhao. He's, uh, he's helping with the solution as well. So uh, basically what we're coming to you with is a uh, ORV3 based solution for the battery backup unit reference design that we um, were developing at analog devices, uh, basically around the, the silicon that we have to offer. Uh, we have a design team that's working on this uh, from not just the uh, the electrical portions of it, but also the mechanical aspects of the design, and I look forward to showing that to you. The agenda that we're working off of today, by the way, I'm going to be speaking rather fast because I have a lot of slides, but uh, uh, th there is a Q&A afterwards, and I lo look forward to entertaining any questions you may have. Uh, so we have a uh, agenda based on the electrical hardware design. We'll be talking a bit about the system level as well as the um, the BBU uh, hardware, hardware uh, design uh, solution. And then we have a, a rather simplified functional state machine diagram that we're going to get into that's uh, based around the BBU module as well as the battery pack that's in the system and a little bit about the shelf MCU as well. We do have a little bit of data on the electrical uh, t lab tests that we've done and then some uh, mechanical aspects of the design. This is a very tricky design. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to, lo lot to, to know, a lot to learn and I hope I can impart some of that information to you today. So this is the overall system level solution. You're looking at the uh, shelf solution here that, that will be delivering uh, 15,000 watts for five minutes. Uh, it's based on a five plus one uh, module uh, t uh, um, redundancy technology here where we, we each module will be delivering 3,000 watts for five minutes. And then in, in the shelf itself also will be the uh, uh, shelf management controller for uh, monitoring and controlling the overall solution. It's based on a module here that you can see. This is a, uh, a rendering based on the spec that uh, has the battery pack built in as well as the uh, main board that you'll, um, I'll get into a little bit later and then uh, all of the control uh, functionality for managing the solution. Uh, in, our, in our design, we actually are developing a, uh, a test board here for doing the, uh, the system together as, as a, a complete unit. Uh, but this one is going to be functioning as, as basically our backplane and our shelf um, management control as well for communications. Uh, into the, in this design, there's a whole lot of compliancy requirements because we are working with a lithium-ion um, battery cell pack which, uh, as you know, is a lot of energy and you have to be very careful, and you, especially with shipping and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, uh, compliancy that you have to deal with. Um, the, ba the basic architecture of the design around the module itself is based on a, a buck and a boost bidirectional solution that we're designing into this uh, solution. The one thing to note here is that all of our design requirements uh, are based on fall protection and safety as our top design priority. We are dealing with a lot of energy here, and it's really critical that we design to, to meet uh, uh, safe ma operation. Uh, otherwise, uh, we could be dealing with, uh, 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 dealing with a lot of energy. Uh, you'll notice in this solution there's a outlined red uh, outline on the left-hand side of the screen, and that's the battery pack. And, and uh, with safety in mind, you've noticed that we have fuses in all of the solutions. So in the event that um, anything should happen, um, uh, we do have fuse protection on, on both ends, both on the back plane side, on the right hand side, as well as the battery pack. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, all the complete monitoring for the back plane currents and, and, OC, and also the battery currents as well, OCP current monitoring and control. Uh, in addition to that, we've got backplane inrush control and disconnection FETs, as well as the battery disconnect um, and, and, uh, uh, and, and also inrush control built into the solution. 
The, um, we've also got a MCU sitting up inside the battery pack to manage all the battery functionality. There's a lot going on in this battery. It's based on a 12 series, six parallel uh, battery pack design. There's a battery management controller in there that's looking at each cell voltage and monitoring the current and, and current control, as well as uh, doing things like monitoring temperature and controlling a fan and also uh, helping uh, manage the, uh, the, the, the charging aspects of the solution and any fault protection. Meanwhile, there's also going to be an MCU in our module itself, we call it the BBU MCU, which is going to be managing all of the communications functions and fault functions around the, either the battery pack or the boost buck or buck or boost functionality at the time and converting it all to the mod bus which goes out to the to the shelf controller and then you've got a constant current current constant voltage uh, pwm controller built into the single device that you have there in the middle that's a single phase solution and then also for, for charging and then also we have a five phase solution which is a, based on a phase expander in addition to that multi-phase bi-directional regulator that you see there in the middle and so that, that basically incorporates our entire module uh, electrical design solution that we're working with here. Um, as I said, it's based on the, uh, um, the spec that we're working with. And I said, what you're looking at here is the uh, uh, simplified functional diagram of the, uh, the firmware or the, the, the overall solution that we're gonna be uh, uh, developing. Uh, by the way, we, uh, we have not, we don't have, um, completed hardware at this point in time. We, we're in the process of fabbing out the boards and working on the battery pack design. But uh, in that, we, what we have here, well, Finkra, you want to jump in and talk about uh, the? Sure. Um, so uh, during a simulated battery life, um, when the battery backup unit is first manufactured and connected to the, the, its, its internal systems, it goes out of the factory and immediately jumps into uh, the sleep mode. So uh, the battery backup unit is Currently, firmware is being flashed and fully functional, just waiting for that re triggered event for it to go in, go to its mission. So, um, during transportation, the uh, battery backup unit is also uh, in sleep mode. So, it's locking its internal diagnostic faults uh, in case there's a um, short circuit in a battery, etc. So, when the battery backup unit is connected to its destination server, it immediately jumps into the standby mode and uh, it's armed and ready to discharge. And in the, in the event of a charging timer, um, the battery backup unit will go into constant current and constant voltage charging mode to maintain the battery health. And in the event of a power brownout, um, our system discharges uh, three kilowatts per battery backup unit for five plus minutes based on a, uh, a high priority interrupt. And during the uh, entire operations of the BBU unit, um, the system controls Modbus, as well as the battery health communications through R2C, can take over the control of the system so that we'll know it, whether or not the battery backup unit is currently healthy and um, operational. And of course, because uh, safety is the top priority for this design, uh, especially in large data centers, we want to ensure that there's no uh, extraneous situations where we damage uh, other components. We go into a fault mode. Um, similarly, for the battery management MCU, we have um, a uh, state machine diagram that documents a uh, manufacturer from the manufacturing perspective as well as the operational perspective. So when the battery pack is first manufactured, it immediately jumps into a sleep mode, and then uh, we perform an initial battery health diagnostics. And once the system complete assembly is finished, um, we go into a um, basically high-speed ISPI communications that, that has all the temperature readings, the cell voltages, as well as passive balancing capabilities for the battery pack. And uh, this data is communicated to our main battery management unit, MCU, which handles all the housekeeping and then the um, uh, fault diagnostics of the uh, entire system. And of course, a uh, fault report is also included in here, and uh, through a top priority interrupt I square C system, we can get the uh, exact type of faults that's uh, being uh, reported on the uh, battery management system. And here is the uh, test board that we're building, and the idea of it is that when we have, uh, when we have this board that can be connected to uh, six uh, BBU units with N plus one redundancy, we'll be able to communicate with each of the BBU unit 
And through an intuitive user graphical interface, um, we can monitor the cell health monitoring. Um, we can control and test the BV unit before it's deployed, um, as well as the uh, telemetry data collection. And it's going to be displayed on something similar here um, uh, on a uh, user's PC. Thank you, Fengray. So um, we do have some test results. Uh, this is a picture of a uh, board that we have sitting in the lab. You can see a lot of wires, and uh, it's a lot of fun doing this. Um, um, there's a lot of functionality built into this solution, such as uh, one of the requirements is current share between phase between um, um, modules, and so and also voltage droop during uh, normal operation. And so uh, we were able to incorporate that well into the design with very high accuracy. The accuracy requirements on the, um, I think, are, are better than 0.2%. So uh, uh, we were able to achieve that as well. Anyway, so uh, the overall efficiency of the boost conversion um, here, you can see going from 31 volts, which would be the minimum battery voltage roughly, to the 48-volt backplane, um, it's roughly about, uh, just you can see, just over 97%, 97.5% or so. So I was quite pleased with that number. Um, although, because this is such a high power system, we're looking at you know, currents on the order of 62 and a half amps, I believe, back to the, to the back plane. Uh, this is a single phase aspect of that. And you can see I'm showing up to 16 amps here. And here you're seeing we're, we're dissipating about 20 watts. Uh, so it's a little over 20 watts. There's a lot of power dissipation uh, in that solution. So airflow is going to be a critical parameter in the overall design, which I'll get to in a moment. Also, in addition to that, uh, switchover was important. Now, what we're doing normally is we may be operating in a charge mode or a standby mode, where we're just sitting there monitoring what's going on. And then all of a sudden, the battery, the uh, backup plane, um, the back plane drops to 47 and a half volts. It sits there for roughly one to two milliseconds as to be determined by the spec, at which point we're going to make the swap over to, uh, to boost. Now we're going to take that battery voltage and immediately bump it up to the, to the back plane voltage. In this case, what you're looking at is it's actually happening within 313 microseconds in this particular plot. There's a lot of detail in these curves. I'm not going to get into that, but, but uh, uh, it was kind of fun uh, setting this up to do that, that function. <clears throat> From an um, active uh, uh, voltage droop perspective, uh, what you're looking at here is the voltage is measured at both BBUs, BBU 1 and 2 in this case, as you saw in that first uh, lab test picture. Um, you can see the voltage is measured at the outputs of those. And then there's one combined uh, remote sense point, which is the gray curve you're looking at. This, I apologize for the data looking kind of um, jumpy. It's, it was collected by hand, but essentially it works. Um, and it's quite clean when you move it up and down on a, on a load basis. You can see it operating in a very linear fashion. And it's, uh, it's very precise. <clears throat> Also, another, another requirement is the active current sharing between phases. Uh, so not only do we offer the droop function, but we don't rely on the droop function for actually doing current share. We're actually re relying on an active share bus to do that. And here you can see um, the two phases that I was working with in this design. They're uh, relatively close to one another. And you can see the yellow and the gray curve as indicating the, uh, the um, error between them. And they're quite close with one another. And then the green curve is the actual spec required. So we're meeting the spec all the way along, except for in the very beginning, which I don't think, uh, I don't know how to achieve 5% error with, uh, with zero load. That's, I don't quite know how they want to address that. But I think we're, we're in good shape there. The overall solution is this battery backup module here. You can see the renderings. You've got the main board here on the bottom left, which is made up of the uh, a connector taking from the battery pack over to the main board. And then you have the five phases for the uh, power, the boost conversion, as well as the disconnect fets in the bottom right-hand corner of that board. And then you have the uh, backplane connector there in the bottom right. And um, we're utilizing the, the same connector for both the battery pack connection as well as the backplane connection. Um, <clears throat> You can see the rendering of the actual module itself. And then when you look at it with the top off, you can see the battery pack in there and then on, on both sides of it. So that's just a good show of that. Uh, one thing to, re to, to know about this is that, uh, whoops, one too many. Hang on a second. 
Okay, there it is. Okay, so this is a little mechanical drawing that uh, we made up, a little cartoon where you can see the uh, pack coming together. Now, the thing to remember is that as that battery pack gets down to the lower voltage level, roughly 31 at the end of its life, at the end of its you know, uh, charge life, um, it has to deliver over 100 amps of current. So there's a lot of current in that design we've got to get from the batteries into the system. And so you're looking at um, a, PC, a green PC board that manages uh, to, to bring the current to the main board. And then you've got these nickel strips that have to carry the current out of the battery cells or between the cells to the green uh, strip as well. And on that green PCB, you're going to find your uh, battery management uh, uh, IC, as well as the MCU for, for monitoring that system. And then in addition to that, you've got uh, various other controls uh, like uh, overcurrent protection, fuse protection, disconnect FETs, and everything. And those are requirements for just shipping the battery. There are certain um, UN requirements for shipping these batteries that you have to meet. So we've made an attempt to make a very safe design here. And you can kind of see the rendering is having it all come together. And what you're looking at here is an airflow diagram of the actual battery pack. So we, we arranged the cells in such a way that we could get airflow through them to get proper cooling. Now, this is a, quite a simulation to run. It takes about two days to run this thing when you're looking at all the thermals. So it's, uh, you got to try to make sure you're doing it right from the get-go. But here you can see uh, the air is flowing through the system. What's interesting is you have a lot of turbulence back by the fan. That's the inlet from the, from the, from the uh, like 25 degrees C air from the, uh, from the uh, data center in through the unit and then back into the back of the, uh, of the shelf itself that it's depositing into the, into the unit. And uh, it's a challenge to get that airflow high enough to get the cooling you want. We're achieving about a 25 deg C, degree C rise at the hot spot in the battery pack. We're still working on that aspect of it, but uh, that's a very interesting um, uh, engineering uh, challenge to, to try to keep that battery pack cool at the, uh, at the final performance of the, of the battery pack. So uh, with that, that's, um, I'm at the 15 minute time level. Uh, that's basically the end of my talk. I have more details if you want to discuss anything, any questions, uh, I would love to hear from you. Sure. The 25 degree C rise that you mentioned, is that during discharge or standby? That's during discharge. So what we're doing is we're estimating um, at the end of discharge, we're estimating about five watts of power dissipation per battery cell. And, um, and that with, I believe it's a 20 milliohm uh, internal resistance. And uh, so at the end of discharge, uh, we're seeing it, that, that, that power dissipation. And the uh, heat accumulates at the end of the pack closest to the, the uh, the center, uh, right in the center there. We're trying to get that maximized airflow in there right now, so that's a challenge. And quick follow-up, uh, what's the power dissipation and temperature rise during standby? During standby, ah, good question. So, you know, we paid a, we're paying a lot of attention to that because we want to make sure that these batteries that are sitting on a shelf somewhere, they're not going to just sit simply self-discharge. So we actually have two, uh, we have a normal operating mode, standby mode, and then we have a sleep mode. The sleep mode, we're anticipating, you know, microamps of current discharge from the battery. So we expect to have a very long discharge period for that. And then, um, but then when you plug into the system, uh, even in sleep mode while in the system, while you've got the uh, backplane available, if you put it into a sleep mode condition there, it, it may jump up to a, a few hundred microamps, but it, we're anticipating fairly, fairly small current. Thank you. Good question. That's a, there's a lot of detail that goes into you know, trying to figure that out. Hey, um, I'm looking at your mechanical design here. Do you have provisions to be able to pass the new UL 9540 and 9548 <laughs> testing? Uh, you know, that's a good question. You know, we we're incorporating, um, let me just start out, let me just indicate to you, you know, we're not actually going to sell the unit. We're, that's not what the analog devices does. We're going to provide a reference design. So what we're doing is we're working with a battery manufacturer to help us through that process. So the anticipation is yes, we, we anticipate doing that. Any other questions? All right, two minutes to spare. Thank you very much, everybody.